Hey everybody, I figured I would do a long version on how I do my lazy girl sourdough bread. It went really, really well when I did my short version on TikTok, but you guys had a ton of questions and I figured I would answer them here. Uh, yeah, cause sourdough is amazing and everybody, everybody, and I mean everybody should get a chance to enjoy this luscious, delicious bread without having to sweat and bleed and suffer. This should not be an overwhelming project. I mean, you could really, really perfect the recipe, but you know what? Yeah, girl wants to just enjoy a toast and not have to spend all day in the kitchen. So let's talk about how I make my lazy girl sourdough in full detail. This is a, oh my goodness, it's a scary ghost. Watch out everybody, it's a blue ghost. Well, the blue ghost is going that way, so I'm safe for a little bit. Anyways, these are all the supplies that I'm using. So I'm going to make two loaves today because I have two starters, usually one starter per loaf. I'm going to make one of the breads a little more on the wet side with the dough, just to compare and show you the difference. I'm going to use a scale just for feeding the starters, but in all honesty, you can just use a measuring cup. You don't have to be that crazy fancy. With my Lazy Girl sourdough, I'm actually using the discard. But to be specific, this is not old, old discard. See, there's still a little bit of bubbles in there, and this got fed two days ago, so there's still a little bit of life in there. But it's it's definitely on the sunken side that's what i'm using and it works this stuff is liquid gold and i am not about to throw it out so on the scale i'm taking out 300 grams of starter with a carving fork and i don't know what it is but these carving forks are really useful uh i just figured that out on my own so once again i'm just showing you what this discard looks like and my second one has a little bit more life in it some more bubbles and if you don't have a scale, just use one and one fourth cup of discard. And as you can see, very, very little is left. To feed, I'm adding 150 grams of water first, and then I stir that up until it's nice and frothy. If you don't have a scale, use three fourths cups. Even though baking is a science, it's also super intuitive. And working with sourdough is really forgiving. So being hyper accurate does not have to be your jam. For the flour, I just use unbleached all-purpose and I'm adding 150 grams. Some people do a mix of rye and whole wheat, which will add a little bit more depth to the sour flavor of your starter. But for me, I'm just leaving it basic. So after stirring that in, this is what it looks like. It's kind of chunky and who cares? It'll feed itself and we'll be very happy. For the dough part, I am bidding adieu to the scale because like I said, you do not have to be hyper, hyper accurate. And like I said again, I'm a lazy girl adding one and one fourth cups of water into the starter times two and with your bread whisk these things are amazing i highly recommend having one of these whisk it around until it's nice and frothy your show Once whisks, I add three cups of all-purpose unbleached flour times two. I've done bread flour before, but to be honest, I can't tell the difference in texture and you know what, it's way too expensive for me. And here's when some real deal laziness comes in. I'm just whisking the dough together and not kneading it until it forms a dough ball. Then I basically faux knead it with the whisk and just fold it on top of each other for a couple minutes. Sourdough dough is super wet and sticky to begin with, and yeah, girl, I hate sticky on her fingers. And this is what it looks like. It's more or less a dough ball and more of a sticky blob. Same deal with the other one. This one has a touch more flour, so it's gonna be slightly on the drier side. What I mean by slightly more flour, there's probably an additional tablespoon and a half that I added into this. And uh, you honestly can just play around with it. Basically how I tell is this one Careful. sticks to my fingers slightly less than the other one. And now I cover them and let them rest for about a half an hour. Now it's time for the first set of stretch and folds, which you do it four times, once every half an hour. Which sounds super specific, but I tell you what, I can't tell you how many times I've forgotten and it's gone like a 
hour between the folds. But basically here what you're doing is you're letting gravity pull the dough down and I just pull and stretch it about eight to ten times, sometimes five. Gosh, I am so forgetful, but basically what you're trying to do is develop that gluten. Same deal, I'm using the whisk to do this because your girl has ADHD and if she gets sticky on her fingers, she kind of melts down. So I found that this works really, really well and it gets the job done. Same thing, eight to 10 stretches. This is my dryer dough and just showing you what the difference looks like. Now set aside, rest for another half an hour. On this second round of stretch and folds is when I like to add the salt. One teaspoon per each. I just use basic sea salt. As science states that life can't really thrive in huh, salty situations, so I wait to do this on my second fold. This is just a personal preference, but I like to believe that my starter is getting some good feeding time before I slow down its feasting fun times. But anyways, look at that gluten really developing already. And now we rest for another half an hour. Third round of stretch and folds, let's go. So even though I've cut out a lot of middle things, this lazy girl sourdough still takes a bit of work and that's why I like to do two loaves at once. Rest time and one more stretch and fold to go. Let's go, guys. Ooh, it's getting close. Hello, my beautiful, beautiful gluten. Now I'm going to flour my banneton baskets in which I'm going to transfer the dough into them. Baskets are optional, but I really do find that they aid in the proofing process just because they're super breathable. And now I just slightly pinch the edges together, and this is kind of in lieu of that final shaping. I skipped that. This baby is the wetter dough, so it's a little jiggly. Well, after I transfer these two into the baskets, I let them rest at room temperature for about two hours. This can really vary, especially depending on the interior warmth of your house. We're usually set around 68, and humidity can make a difference too. We have that Northwest coastal climate, and two hours seems to work for us. After two hours, these babies have grown. So I do a final proof in the fridge. So I move them over there and I don't do it more than 12 hours. So next morning is when we have our bake off. Yeah, yeah, I know our fridge is super messy, but we just had Christmas and a house full of people. So that is my excuse. All right, dough babies, see you tomorrow. Fast forward into the next day, I am setting the oven at 500 for 45 minutes and I place the duchies in the oven for those 45 minutes. And you guys do not have to spend an arm and a leg for high quality duchies. I got mine at Walmart for like 30 bucks. They're ceramic plated and they work beautifully. Um, I know 30 bucks can sound like a lot, but oh my gosh, these things can be like 200. It's nuts. In the final 10 minutes of preheating the duchies, I take the dough babies out and they are big and getting really close to the overproofing stage, but we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Rip off a couple pieces of parchment and place your dough on top. This one is the more dry one, so it holds its shape really, really nicely. And as you can see with the wet dough, it wants to spread out real bad. Dust on a light layering of flour. Now for the really fun part, take an X-Acto blade and score away. 
but make sure one of your scores is nice and deep, which is gonna help prevent serious splitting in the oven. You can get super fancy with this. My blade's a little on the dull side, so I'm just doing a little quick slashing. As you can see, the wet dough is trying its hardest with holding its shape, and you might think like, why would I wanna do a wetter dough? It's so ugly. But I tell you what, I kinda prefer the texture a whole lot more. All right, after the 45 minutes are up, take your dutchies out and place your bread in. And, and this is honestly where I made a big mistake. My brain was not working clearly because I was doing this video. And this is where it is really, really important to drop the temperature here to 450. But I did not. I totally forgot. And that's why the bottoms are a little bit more dark. So I highly recommend to drop it to 450. Place them back into the oven and you're gonna set your timer for 25 minutes and pretend that I'm dropping the temperature to 450. I'm repeating this 8 million times. That's so you guys don't make the same mistake. So drop to 450. After the 25 minutes are up, take the lids off and do an additional 15 minutes. This is when I realized my mistake and I tried to redeem myself by lowering the temperature for the last bit. Once out, take them out of the Dutch ovens as soon as you can to let them cool. This is what the more dry dough looks like. And here is the more wet dough. And yeah, you can see it's a little misshapen, a little <laughs> deflated and crinkly, but I tell you what, sometimes the uglier, the better the personality. So this piece is comes from the more wet dough, this is more dry. The wet is a lot more airy, but has less of a bounce back. Where is the dry, less airy, more bounce back. Uh, I, like I said, I really like the wet dough more. It kind of has the texture of kasha. Obligatory sourdough munching ASMR. And that is basically it, folks. It might take some kind of trial and error, but this is what really works for me. And yeah, keep it simple. Don't overthink it. And yeah, just have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for me? Oh, thank you. Mm. How?